All right, a brother made me aware of this, and it's kind of a little bit disturbing. Um, this thing of Charles Lawson here recently, this is uh, November 11th, just a few days ago, three days ago, this came out. And he said, Lawson mentions, you know, the Antichrist movement, the Antichrist system, and he does not say one word about, you know, the church, the universal church of the Antichrist. Watch this. That, in other words, America should be a globalist society that embracing globalism, that all the world is going to have to come together in order for the world to prosper. Donald Trump, and he has many warts, believe me, he has many warts, believe me. But there's one thing I do believe. I do believe that he loves this country. And Donald Trump. Donald Trump, a trained Jesuit. Fordham University. His son went to Georgetown and his other son went to another Jesuit school. I forget which one it was. Trump is speaking in France this morning. And he has made it clear that he is a nationalist. In plain words, America comes first. Yeah, it's called uh, Donald Trump's an actor. Give me a break. What does all this mean? In order for the Antichrist to come to power, he will have a universal language, he'll have a universal monetary system, he'll have a universal uh, military, and there will be a universal trade among, not nation states anymore, globalist. A one world government is the foundation for the Antichrist. Uh, no, actually it isn't. According to the King James Bible, the whole world is going to worship the beast. You worship in church buildings. The Antichrist, the foundation for him is a universal church. And what is the universal church? Um, that would be Catholicism. Um, I can tell you from personal experience that Baptist preachers are scared to death to really come out hard against Roman Catholicism because they fear losing their building. And how can they really speak against Catholicism because a lot of their practices go back to the catechism? The church building thing, the suit and tie, all that other stuff, that stuff's not in the Bible. Where'd they get it from? They got it from the Catholic Church. All right? And, I, you know, I'm speaking from personal experience, literally. Uh, Country Chapel Baptist Church, Eldred, Pennsylvania, the pastor, uh, Bruce Ireland, told me, I was doing a prophecy conference, and he told me, he said, take it easy on the Catholics. And I brought it up later on in an argument with him, and he said, he said, I know a Baptist pastor that lost his church because he spoke against Catholicism. So yes, Baptist preachers are afraid to speak against the Catholic Church. I find it interesting that Lawson just omits the universal church when that is the very system of the Antichrist. Okay? But this is, it gets worse. Here we have this thing, he's talking about the deity of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Everything does. But basically, that's what it is. And so the Council of Nicaea, if somebody come along and say, well, then all these councils, councils were Roman Catholic. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you read the Council of Nicaea? Have you read the, read the, read the, uh, the statement of the Council of Nicaea? Okay, here's the Nicene Creed. It goes down through here. And at the end it says, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Listen to what he says. Read it. I've read it many times. And I can't find one thing wrong with it. Now, there are... Other I can't find one thing wrong with it. Well, then why is the word Catholic used? You say, well, brother, that just means universal. Yes, okay. The universal church of the Antichrist. Where's the word Catholic at in the King James Bible? It's not in there. It's a Greek philosophical word that existed before the first century, too, by the way. Right? Why would he say that? There's nothing wrong with the Nicene Creed. That is disturbing. But it gets worse. Other things that could have been added to it. But what was said is as straight down the line as can be said. Straight down the line as can be said. One holy Catholic church. And Constantine convened that council. And the reason he did is because he was a Christian emperor. <laughs> Uh, Constantine is a Christian emperor? Did you see the Pauls? A, a Christian emperor. Constantine, the founder of Roman Catholicism, is a Christian. You just heard it. Lawson just said that Constantine is a Christian emperor.
Theodosius was a Christian emperor. Constantine convened it, the Council of Nicaea, because he he's supposed to at the Milvian Bridge when he was when he was when he was fighting for control of the empire, he saw a cross in the in the heavens that said by this conquer and so Constantine took that as a message from God and he did conquer and he became the undisputed uh, 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 leader of the empire and that's when he he uh, he officially he officially ended Christian persecution and declared it to be a a viable religion oh my word I just knocked my headphones right off the back of my head. I mean, are you kidding me? Constantine ended Christian persecution. <coughs> Excuse me. Constantine brought together pagan things, pagan, you know, terminology, and gave them Christian names. And he made a state church. He took Roman, you know, basically the Roman Empire, the Roman military presence, the Roman government, I should say it that way, and merged it with Christian concepts, thereby creating the Roman Catholic Church. And it, Lawson is saying this is all good stuff. He was a Christian. Oh, man. And that's why he called the Council of, of, of Nicaea. Now, do I know whether Constantine went to heaven or not? Well, I know this. I know the fruit of the Council of Nicaea. As far as what they stated, folks read it. It's right down the line. No it's right down the line. Yeah called the broad path to destruction. I have been very, you know, I'm not going to take many stands or whatever else uh, against Lawson. And a lot of people said I've been blessed with him, whatever else. And, I, and I, people say, what do you think? And I just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to judge the guy. Okay, you judge him yourself. All right. Uh, why is he saying these things? I'm not accusing the guy of anything because I get all that stuff put on me and whatever. Oh, you think everybody's this? Whatever. You know, whatever. Explain what he's saying here. Okay? Just disgusting. Play a little bit more here. No problem with it. Now, they got the Council of Chalcedon, the Council of Twos, and all these other councils. Sure, you got them all piled up one on top of another. But you got to remember something. The early church was in a dogfight over the truth of who Christ was. And that's... Okay, and then he gets into the thing of Tertullian and the whole creation of the Trinity and that, and he was doing God's work. Whatever, you can watch the rest of the thing yourself, but uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm never going to recommend this man again. Uh, quite frankly, I don't trust him one bit. Um, to say Constantine was a you know a Christian ruler and, and, and he did good. He created the Catholic Church, for goodness sake. And the Nicene Creed, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. 